Hello everyone, welcome back to the Base Bros Variety Show. I'm Doug. I'm Alan. And today we're reviewing, what's it called Alan? What's the... What's the... A and K M249. The a Speci Specifically the Mark II middleweight variant. There's a, there's a heavier weight? Yeah, well, okay, so there's a featherweight variant, okay. which is like six to seven pounds. This one's like ten and a half, maybe Jesus. pushing eleven. Okay, well, um, it sure does feel heavier than ten and eleven pounds. Um, well, you know, M249, American heavy machine gun, uh, replaced the M60, the pig from the Vietnam War era and onward. And as an airsoft gun, it is a lot of fun. The entire chassis is metal. So the lower part metal, upper rail part metal, barrel completely metal. The only polymer parts to this gun are the magazine, the stock, the front, uh, top and bottom part of the handguard and I believe the part of the, the uh, quick change barrel handle. Everything else in this gun is metal. Oh, and I think the charging handle is metal as well. So this gun uh, is originally Allen. And when I was first thinking of the airsoft, uh, I wanted to use this one. It's a big beefy machine gun and as you can tell, it's a big beefy guy. And I'm gonna go over some gameplay basics with it. When you're gonna use it at the field and what field you should use it at. So the M249, uh, especially this middleweight class, is pretty heavy. This is uh, two or three times heavier than your standard Airsoft M14, AK-47. It is also extremely bulky. This thing requires a lot of exercise and a lot of upper arm and sort of some endurance and stamina to use as well. Most of the times, when we're out in the field using this bad boy, it's best used at uh, mid to long ranges as most fields will put a uh, engagement distance on LMG because uh, I'm running out of breath with fucking mask on. You, you want me to take the lead a little bit here? Go for it. So as he was talking about when the gameplay comes to this gun, you can actually hit the ranges of about a pretty good M4. So up to about, I would say, 210 feet is what you can push this gun to somewhat reliably. When I mean somewhat reliably, I mean within bursts of about 10 to 20 rounds, you can hit people up to 210, 210 feet. Um, and as Doug was saying, this gun, um, because of its nature and being a full auto LMG, a lot of the fields that we have played at have put a medium engagement distance on LMG, so you don't end up spraying somebody point blank with an LMG. Usually that's uh, around somewhere between 50 to 60 feet on that minimum engagement distance. As far as gameplay goes with this gun, do you want to take it from here? I'll take it from here. So this gun is an objective gun. It's also basically airsoft artillery. The way it works, as Alan was saying, is it can, it can reach those heights, but the sheer volume of fire this baby puts out is enough to suppress any outdoor objective game you were playing. So what you're going to do is when you're playing with your buddies and you're running up with your squad, you're going to kneel down, just put that bipod and don't be afraid to go prone. And whatever angle of the three notch bipod you need, just set up, get down and prone, and then you just start laying it into the enemy. And if you need to get up, just read it. Close it back up, make your turn of head, hold it like this, get right back up. Firing from the hip can be effective, so walking fire. Well, watch out, Alan, watch out. Great for clearing brush if someone gets close. But remember, with that 50 foot in, uh, engagement distance, it'll be good to have a uh, pistol on you as well. I'm losing breath again. What else is there to say about this gun? This gun perfectly excels for the type of player who does not want to be up close to individuals on the enemy team. This is really good if you have a dedicated team that you're playing with, especially with your buddies. When you have a gun like this, you want to be further up than the sniper, but behind the rifleman or the SMG guys. And because of that, it also lends to its weight. You can't really rush with this gun here. And that's just due to its weight and bulky size. I'm sure a really big, muscly dude could manage with it, but that's not what it's designed for. What else is there to say? Uh, obviously, when you're firing really fast with this gun, it is going to spread a little bit. You're gonna see your BBs kind of go off a little bit and it's not going to keep a tight range uh, or grouping with your BBs when you're firing with this gun. 
that's just a given. Unless you put a lot more money into this gun, that's just how it's going to be, and that's how you're going to have to play with this gun. You aren't going to be able to snipe people with one or two shots. Usually how you get people is in bursts of, bursts of minimum five rounds, four to five rounds. And I personally think the, the perfect engagement distance for this gun is about 90 to 100 feet. That is where this gun perfectly excels at. And, and, uh, to add on to that, when you are playing those objective games and you're spraying BBs like crazy, it's good that this, if you, if you for around two to three minutes, if you, even if you're going on and off on the trigger, your big box man just holds about like, 3,000 BBs. 2,500, I think. It will it, you, it will deplete very quickly. So you always remember that if you are a very trigger happy player, make sure to keep some extra BBs on you, or even if you, hold on for a second. Just like in real life, the M249 is M4 capable magazine. So just goes right in there, and it works. It's pretty sweet. So in the case that you somehow manage to run out of the 2,500 rounds in this box, ma box mag, which does come with the a and M249, we'll talk a little bit more about this box mag to be specific, but if you do happen to run out of ammo with this here, you can always rely on your buddies to supply M4 mags. And since M4 is the most common platform type in Airsoft, that means there's going to be plenty of these mags that you can use to substitute into the gun. Now, uh, obviously because M4 mags don't hold as much as compared to a giant fucking box mag, you will run out of ammo pretty quick with these guys, high cap or mid cap regardless. So it's obviously not designed to excel with these, but it can work. What else is there to say about the gameplay aspect of this gun? Um, it, it's just an excellent, it's an excellent objective weapon. If you're playing with the squad or even with other people, you're very friendly. Always take this to the objective or to hold down sightlines, corners, so that your riflemen can go ahead and push up and give them covering fire. And what I've found from playing with this, always going prone, it saves you will not get killed. It's very difficult unless someone is playing is close to you or maybe medium distance, they have a really good shot. People at long range, when you're suppressing them, won't be able to get you because of your prone position and the BBs are going, usually even going up with the hop up, right? So they'll probably just move off to the side because of air resistance or whatever and it's just great if, if you want to play objective and you want to be the big machine gun guy and basically be one man artillery this gun is for you especially yeah and a lot of times uh, a big usefulness to this gun is a lot of people notice when they're getting shot at by this gun um, because only lmgs can do it right and because of that sometimes you're not always going to get kills with this gun but you will excel in objective play through suppression working with teammates to push while you hold down angles and corners. I know you kind of talked a little bit about that. Yeah. So don't be afraid or demoralized when you're not getting kills with this gun because that sometimes happens on certain types of fields or maps. What kind of fields and maps does this excel on? Obviously, it has to be outdoor. I can never see any instance of this practically working in a, in a viable sense anywhere indoors. Not to mention, out of the box, it shoots about 395 with .2s, so what field is going to allow you to fire at that FPS to begin with, indoors? So, this is definitely an outdoor gun for maps on outdoor maps that have good angled sight lines for places that you're able to deploy in and have a good field of range and ability to actually spray down volley fire. This is not the type of gun to shoot at quick peaking angles the type of angles where you kind of always have to keep leaning out. This is one where you take a point and you hold an angle and you just sit there instead of rapidly peeking. Uh, what else there is to say is about the price of this gun. At the time that I got this gun, which was way back in 2017, so this gun is about six years, pushing actually seven years old now. And it's held up very well considering how much I've used it. And at the price point that I got it at, now I don't know what the current price is, I think it's about 350 maybe 370 for this gun. I got it at about uh, 290 And when you look at all the other LMGs within Airsoft, this is probably the most economical choice available. And that's just due to its how it was designed and made and kind of one of the more first LMGs on the market. So this is a great beginner option for individuals who want to get into the Kind of support LMG role or for individuals who just want something solid to build off of because considering that I got this for 290 
it's a very cheap option to get into LMGs when there's other options like the LCT, RPK, RPD, PKM that 300, are... 300, 400, 500... That's not even... No, it's, it's 500 plus. 500 plus. Where you're going to have to dump a shitload of money. So it, this is a lot more economical option. Obviously, it doesn't perform as well as those guns, and that's a given, but you can upgrade it if need be. Uh, after using this gun for so long, the first thing that actually went out was the rubber bucking, and then after that, it was the uh, piston head and the piston gear uh, teeth, as well as the O-ring on the uh, piston cylinder, so, uh, and the nozzle. Um, but the gears themselves are steel and solid, and surprisingly, the motor is still running pretty well, considering how much this has been shot, how many rounds have been shot through this. The gearbox is steel reinforced, and the uh, I've upgraded the hop-up as well, just because it's not the greatest, and I've upgraded it to an EPS hop-up. It's not the CNC bull, bull gear hop-up, but it's still pretty good. It's that good middle ground. And adjusting the hop-up is as simple as twisting this dial left and right, right here on the gun. Now if I can put this piece back down. There we go. Some other things to note on this gun are that uh, you can actually take down the uh, the barrel of this gun on how the kind of mimicking on how the F real M249 works. This is not a carry handle here. This is a quick barrel change handle. So if you try to hold your gun from this from a for a prolonged amount of time, it will cause damage to this airsoft gun. And conversely, like the real M249, if you tried to carry the M249 from this handle, it would actually damage the real M249. So just something to note. You can actually take the entire barrel assembly off, and that'll take out the uh, hop-up, the bucking, and the barrel with this tab here if you press towards yourself. I'm not going to do it because it's really hard to take out, but they also do offer variants of this gun where you can take the uh, top loading panel off, and it'll have a dedicated Picatinny uh, rail for you if you want to put optics on there. Quite honestly, you don't really need optics on this because you see so many BBs flying forward that you can just point shoot like this and just adjust accordingly. I almost never aim, honestly, I don't think I've ever aimed down sights with this gun um, in game. It's never been of, of need. Uh, another thing to talk about is the box mag, wherever that may be. Thank you, cameraman. This box mag comes with a gun and it's serviceable, but it's kind of shit. I'm gonna be honest, it's kind of shit. Uh, if anything gets inside this, this mag here, it will jam and you will have to take the entirety of it apart and then put it back together. When you're running with it, sometimes the don't turn to me, don't turn to me camera, my, my mask is off. My, I'm like Bane. Um, when you're running around, the this part right here, this part right here will jostle and it will open up when you're trying to lay down, especially when you press the box mag against the ground. This part right here will flex and open up and then rocks can get inside and actually destroy insides of the box mag it's very bad for it so when you're playing outside you have to be very aware that you're not running around and jostling and hitting it on things because small particles and debris can get inside and break apart the box mag and especially with an lmg one of the most important pieces other than the gun itself is the magazine because you have to lay down consistent fire and you need a lot of ammo so the mag is just as important in the gun and a lot of times this will crap out on you how much does it cost alan to replace that oh my god i don't know like oh it was a lot. I think it was like 50 bucks, but it, it's not cheap. I would honestly recommend getting yourself a better magazine, um, just because in the long run, if this is something you want to commit to as your main role in Airsoft, you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble. It does take two uh, AA batteries there, um, but something to talk about also with the mag is that it does have a few different modes on it. Now there's a sound control mode that when you're firing, it will load the magazine but only when it hears a loud noise, ideally the gun being fired. The off switch, and then a auto-loading mode, if you can hear that right now. So, out of the two modes that it offers, sound control is good for when you're not in constant engagements or you're doing very short uh, bursts. Switching to complete full auto, loading constantly, is very good if you're spraying down a lot of hurt all in one go and you need a lot of ammo for a really long burst. Probably uh, do a little bit of test shooting and show you how fast it shoots and we wouldn't get a really good accurate gauge of its range here on unfortunately it due to the size. Far. It, it does fire pretty far. far but it does spread a little bit 
We can also show you the difference between 9.6 volts and 11.1. So let's get to it. This is the 9.6 volt NIM. Do you? Okay, this is with an 11.1 lithium ion, not a lipo, a lion battery. I can't see anything without my <laughs> This is Alan in Post, and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.